Hello guys and welcome to my review of Barcelona 1, Athletic Club 0. It's Barcelona who've got the three points here, a massive and crucial win in the race for the La Liga title. There are some negatives of this game, some positives, plenty to talk about, so let's get started. Let's dive straight in there guys then with the lineups for both teams. Let's talk about Setien, you know he started basically with what we've said, not what I would have wanted but what we've said. Longley did start though which was really great, again he was superb in defence. Arthur got the nod of course, there's been so much speculation about his move to Juventus maybe a possible swap deal sort of thing with Pjanic to balance the accounts of both teams, but I think Setien maybe wanted to give Arthur that one last chance, put him in there, it didn't really come off, and you wonder whether that speculation did play a big part in that, or play a big part in that, sorry. And then up front, he went with the Trident guys, as you could call it, you know, Messi, Suarez, Griezmann, I think he really wanted the three points here. He caved in again, Setien, and he just put all of them out on the pitch, so not the best lineup, quite narrow, and of course, that was going to give us difficulties, we know it would, but again... Setien, he still went for it. Athletic Club, on the other hand, did actually rotate, and we spoke about this in the preview, that we actually may get away with something here, that Athletic Club were going to rest some of their players, and really, that's what happened. A lot of their key names rested. Capo wasn't playing, Inigo Martinez wasn't playing, of course, Yuri was suspended, was Danny Garcia rested him in a few, I think he maybe actually started, to be fair. Um, up front, Raul Garcia wasn't playing, Munain was benched, so... A lot of names missing, a lot of names missing, and Barca really had to go for that. What I would say, though, is to be fair, Athletic Club, you know, they do what they do. They sit back and defend deep, so the names they have on the team sheet, it doesn't make too much of a difference. They're all very good at executing that plan, and as we saw last night, the team and the name really made no real difference. They were just low in their block and made things really, really difficult for Barcelona. Let's get on to the match action now then, guys. We started with quite some intent. I said that there would be a desire in Barcelona. I think they've seen the refereeing decisions in favour of Real Madrid. We wanted to regain top spot, and at the end of the day, we'd end up doing that, boys. But we started well. We did start well. Some decent chances in there. Griezmann was starting well. He was getting heavily involved. You know, nice little dummies here and there. Quicker passing of him. Actually more involvement with the front three. And I think already he actually plays better off of Suarez. If Suarez was a little more you know, patient with him, if he gave him the ball a little bit more, then that could work quite well, but you could already see in the first, you know, 15 minutes, Griezmann picking up the ball, dishing into Suarez, and him just dishing off to another player, and that worked a lot better than when we're just passing sideways, and Griezmann's the focal point, I do not like when that happens, so I think that's a, a slight positive, I suppose, Griezmann is a little bit better when he starts off of a striker, but again, he was taking up that left wing role, and that means no width down that side, that makes it all so easy for Athletic Club to just shape up there in the fence, defend really on up to the 18-yard line. They don't need to go any wider than that, and that's always a massive bonus for a team defending. And, of course, we knew they were going to defend well. We knew that was going to happen. We knew they were going to counter-attack through Inyaki Williams. That's what they did. And again, guys, Barcelona got tired. About 25 minutes in the football, it was becoming nice and quick, and it all just slowed down, guys. And that's really simple, just to do with the aging squad there. They aren't really resting right now. The full line has been played every game, as it really has to. And the fitness, you know, of this side is really weak. What I would say is Setien came in and improved that from day one. But has he lost his has he lost his mind a little bit, Setien? I think on the first week, maybe even the first month, guys, you know, a lot of positive things that Setien was doing, coming into the club, changing things up. Has all of that gone out the window? I worry whether that happened at Barcelona, I really do. Because if you look how tired the team looks almost every game now, there are large, large periods of the game where the ball is being moved really slowly, the team has little potence in the final third, and that's just frustrating to watch, it really is, guys. You know, there's nothing really going on up front. The ball circulation is very, very slow. And again, half-time, nil-nil, Setien looks really frustrated, as did the players, and there weren't good signs out there. They really looked destined, guys, for a nil-nil. I was preparing myself for a draw. You all just thinking if the ball's moving across slowly, the players had lacked control over the game. It wasn't promising out there. It, re it really, really wasn't for large parts of the game. And then something happened, guys. We decided to bring off someone off of our bench, and his name is Ricky Pooch. He absolutely changed this game and there's just no other way you can put it. He absolutely changed the game for Barcelona and has won Barcelona, really, three vital points in La Liga. He really has. Brilliant from him. He came on, he did everything that Arthur didn't. He got his head up, he was breaking lines with his passes. He actually played forward, he was dribbling past people, he was introducing players out wide. He was doing everything you want from Barca central midfielder, that sort of dynamism. You don't want to compare him to Xavi and Iniesta, but really, just picking up the ball, moving it super quickly, breaking lines, getting other players involved, not just getting the ball and tossing it back to the centre-back and then playing out to the full-back and then back to the centre-back and then when they press, back to the goalie. No, none of that happened anymore. 
With Ricky Puch on the pitch, the ball got moved so much quicker and a lot further forward too. And that was a massive bonus. And also, guys, with substitutions, give credit to Rakitic and Ansu Fati, who also had a massive impact on this game and were really, really key in getting us this victory. And, of course, it was Ivan Rakitic himself who got that goal. The golden goal for Barcelona. It's a goal that keeps us in that title race. And it's from Rakitic, guys, like we mentioned. Of all people, Rakitic bundles it into there. And I say bundles. It was quite a nice finish once he got there. But maybe a little bit lucky with the ball squirmed through or the way it came through Messi gets a little flick on it he gets it over to Rakitic and he just plots it over the goalkeeper there Unai Simon as he rushes in and once he got there I was just thinking come on come on surely and what I would say guys is after the ball goes in the net the reaction of the players Messi he leaps onto Rakitic gives him a big hug like a child going to his mother and that was just that from that reaction from Messi just saying Thank you. Thank you for keeping us alive in this title race because, my God, we were looking leggy. The team was looking old. However, it was looking more positive and really because of the substitutions. You know, once we got those fresh legs on, it was so much better. But again, large periods of the game, Messi knows how much of a bad situation Barca are in right now. But there are some simple remedies. And we saw it last night, how exciting Barca can be. When Fatih was on the ball, when the Ricky Puch was on the ball, they brought that life back to the team, guys. With a fully fit Barca, it could have been a fun game out there. But they're so tired. They're very old. There's no width and intensity, really. And those are all things that can actually be changed quite easily. They really can be fitness and different players, if I'm being honest. You know, players like Ricky Puch, they're of course going to change the game. They have that Barca DNA in their blood. They can move it much quicker. He knows exactly what his role is in that team. And I mean, I've watched Ricky Puch a number of times for the B team. I've seen him do similar things like this, but when he's played for the first team, he hasn't been that good. You know, he's been bright, he's been promising, but last night was a massive moment in the career of Ricky Puch. It really was, and it can't be underestimated. Coming on against Athletic Bilbao, they were sitting so deep, they were so comfortable, they were growing into the game as it got deeper on, of course. That's what they wanted. They wanted to frustrate Barca as long as possible. And there were periods in the game where nothing was going on. Nothing was going on. They were so comfortable, Barca, moving it so slowly. And the Dickie Pooch to come onto a game of this magnitude and make that much of an impression, that was a big moment in his career. That was the best performance of, from him in an official Barcelona first team shirt. So, big moment for him, not in a cup game, in a massive league game, in a title race against Real Madrid. Well done to Ricky Puch on the big stage for really making it an absolutely brilliant win for Barcelona. And the last 30 minutes, I think, in general, were much better. Athletic, you know, they pushed us, but we ended up holding out. You know, we had a few more late chances there. Ansu Fati was involved, so was Vidal. They came very close in the 90th minute or so. And at the end of the day, guys, Athletic, they also pushed, like I mentioned, that was that header from Raul Garcia that, you know, Ter Stegen didn't cover himself in glory and just went wide of the post. And my goodness me, everyone had their hearts in their mouth there. Then, but full time, guys, we've got three vital points there. Another clean sheet. I want to say well done to our defence and goalkeeper for that. I haven't really been mentioning that in some of my videos in the past, but yes, another clean sheet for Barcelona. And you know what? We haven't conceded since football has returned, and long may it continue. Absolutely brilliant stuff at the back. And I want to say I give massive credit to Pique and Longley in particular. That partnership for me is the Barcelona centre-back partnership. And it was last season and it had to be this season. When Setien came in and he played him Titi against Napoli and he played him Titi against Real Madrid. And you know what? We messed up in both of those games. And you may say it's a small change, but Longley is so criminally underrated at the back. It's absurd. And again, he was brilliant in there. You know, he's holding in Yaki Williams up there constantly. He can't match him for pace, of course, but he gets there before he needs to match him for pace, you know. That sort of Puyol like defending, getting right into the players, great challenges, and he's so calm at bringing the ball up from the back too. So I want to give credit to the defence there, and of course Mark Andre to Stegen in goal for another clean sheet. So just overall points on the game. Then I haven't even mentioned Sergio Busquets yet, who for me was absolutely immaculate last night, especially in that first half when everyone was looking so weary, so leggy. He was winning the ball back. He made a vital challenge on Iñaki Williams to deny him what surely would have been a certain goal. He was bringing the ball forward. He was breaking lines with his passes. He was brilliant. He actually got suspended and then taken off as well which I found quite odd but hey he's not going to be there for Celta Vigo so other players are going to have to enter into that game but he'll be back fully fit now for Atletico which is really really positive he'll have a whole week to rest for that game and that's brilliant a fully fit Busquets for a game of that magnitude is exactly what we need of course the subs were outstanding last night I just want to say Ricky's name again what a performance from a young man like him, you know, his stature. People were saying, no, you can't play him against Athletic Club because of the physicality. He proved that's how you match up against physicality. You break it down with talent, and that's exactly what he did. Clean sheet, like I mentioned, well done. Hasn't been mentioned enough. Brilliant from the Barca boys at the back to keep four clean sheets in a row. Five in total, but, you know, a kind of, it's kind of like a new season now, isn't it, with the football resuming. So, four games, no goals conceded, and that includes an away trip to Sevilla. And, of course, the game now against Athletic Club. 
And what I would say though, guys, just to bring us down to earth a little bit, we look like a tired team. We really do. We look like a team on our last gas and rotation needs to start happening because like we saw, we've got a lot of bright players from the bench and there are so many more. Players like Monchu, who I, who I mentioned in the preview, would have had a similar impact today. They get on the ball, they make things happen and they love Barcelona. They really want Barcelona to win matches. And that is what we need in games like these. So if we want to keep winning games, if we want to push for this La Liga title, if we want to beat Celta on the weekend, which is going to be a massively tough game, can I just say, we have to rotate the team and bring in the players who will actually make a difference like we saw last night. That's what happens when they get played. And I'm hoping Setien learns from that because he looked really frustrating out there. He, you know, him and Sarabia for large parts of the game and the camera panned over to them were just, you know, fuming on the sidelines, head in their hands. You know, it wasn't a pleasant game for so long of it, but... I, what I would say is the subs and the clean sheet and Ricky Puch, of course, that was really, really positive to see. So we march on, like I said, Celta Vigo away on Saturday. That's going to be 4 p.m. I think UK time, if I'm not correct, it could be 3. And either way, Saturday afternoon, we're going to be away to Celta Vigo. That's a massive test. I don't think we've won there since 2015. So for goodness sake, please, Barcelona, win that game. That's going to be massive. And if anyone's thinking that's easy you know, recalibrate yourself because that's going to be a really tough test. And then just a couple of days later, we face Atletico Madrid at home. And then a few days later, Villarreal away. So, yep, guys, yep. This title race is not looking favourable for us. But that three points last night was massive. It really was. If you think about those next three games, guys, we really could be dropping points in, you know, one or two of them. I'm hoping it's one max. I really am. We've got to win at least two of those games to stay in the title race. I mean, what a massive win it was last night. Just to keep going in La Liga. Let's hope Real Madrid drop points. We know the referees are going to step in for them, but surely, guys, they can't do it 24-7. If they do, you know, we won't stop preaching about it because it's just completely out of order. But again, now we've got to focus on ourselves. That's what we did last night. We kept the pressure on, and that's really what mattered. So thank you guys all for watching. Drop a like on the video. Leave your thoughts down below too. I'll be getting back to all of you there. I'll see you guys very, very soon. Goodbye.